Dr. Bob Akazizade from Los Angeles, California. Today I'm going to talk about facial paralysis reconstruction after acoustic neuroma surgery. Even though acoustic neuromas are intimately associated with the facial nerves, thankfully if you have your acoustic neuroma surgery with a great experienced neurotologist or neurosurgeon, the chance of facial nerve injuries are actually very low. However, if facial nerve injuries do occur, we do need to address them relatively early. There are really two circumstances after acoustic neuroma surgery with the facial nerve issue. One is that the facial nerve is irreversibly damaged or injured, and that the facial tone and movement is completely absent. We need to address that in a different way than the majority of patients who do get some injury or damage or temporary weakness of their facial nerve, but they do get recurrence and improvement of their facial tone and movement, but not complete resolution. So in the first scenario where you get complete paralysis, in this illustration, the nerve, the facial nerve exits basically the brain, and this is the area that acoustic neuromas tend to cause injury. So if the nerve is completely paralyzed, we still have access to the nerve as it exits behind the ear and comes onto the face. So we have to give this nerve some input so that all of these muscles get some nerve input. So we typically utilize other nerves that are nearby to give nerve input into these muscles. The two most commonly used nerves are the hypoglossal nerve masseteric nerve. My personal preference is the masseteric nerve because it allows us to get a little bit more dedicated smile function with biting down, which is a much more natural way of smiling than trying to thrust your tongue, which is what you need to do with the hypoglossal nerve. And I really, really like the type of smile that you get. Unfortunately, the type of smile that you get is not spontaneous. You have to be conscious of it. So to counteract that, we utilize the opposite side of the face, the nerve to the opposite side of the face, to help move this side that's paralyzed. And we utilize a cross facial nerve wrap and a gracilis muscle transfer to do that. So in the scenario where the facial nerve is irreversibly damaged, these operations need to be instituted within about a year after neuroma surgery. Otherwise, these muscles will all atrophy and we will not be able to get great nerve input into those muscles. Now, the other scenario that we often see is the nerve was damaged initially, but you get some nerve input back. So there's some tone, there's some movement, but it's not great movement and it's not dedicated movement. And the patient has lack of coordination in the smile mechanism. And you see the corner of the uh, mouth frowning down, the eyes narrowing, and so forth. In those cases, we need a combined treatment for those patients. And we combine physical therapy with Botox treatments to reduce the hyperactivity of the muscles, and a newer and more novel surgery called selective neurolysis, where we actually go and reduce the activity of the nerves that are causing the smile to frown rather than elevate. So as a result, it's very, very important that you address any type of facial nerve issue immediately with an experienced facial nerve expert. If you have any further questions, feel free to visit our website at facialparalysisinstitute.com, and I look forward to hearing any responses from you.